Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness and today I'm going to show you how to make the persimmon dumpling pouch. The dumpling pouch comes in three different sizes and it's a great opportunity for you to add a little bit of patchwork to your project. So grab your supplies and let's get started. Okay, before we begin, you'll need to open up the PDF pattern file and you always want to open the file using Adobe Reader. It's a free program that you can download to your computer or device if you don't already have it. And the last three pages of the PDF pattern are the pattern pieces. So there's one pattern piece for each size, small, medium, and large. And if you'll notice on the page, there's a four centimeter square and a one inch square. So you'll wanna measure either of those squares to make sure that they measure either exactly four centimeters or exactly one inch. So you'll be cutting out your pattern piece to the outside of the thick black line. And when you do so, your pattern piece will look like this. For this particular video, I'll be using size large for this demonstration. However, the instructions will be the same for all sizes unless otherwise noted. So please use your pattern piece as well as the cutting instructions to cut out all of your fabric and interfacing. Okay, so let's start by assembling the patchwork strips. So in the cutting instructions, you'll be designated to cut uh, certain lengths of strips depending on which size that you're making. So we'll start off with two strips. I'm gonna go ahead and place them right sides together. Feel free to pin or wonder clip one of the long edges. And we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and sew the pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, go ahead and press the seam open. And you'll continue attaching your fabric strips in the same manner until you have enough strips pieced for the size you're making. So here's what my piece looks like once all the strips are attached. And as you can see from the wrong side, all of my seams are pressed open. Okay, go ahead and trim your strip set so that it's the same size as your foam interfacing. So now let me show you how to attach the fabric to the interfacing. So we'll start off with the strip set and the foam interfacing. So if you're using a fusible foam, go ahead and place the wrong side of the fabric against the adhesive, and you'll just go ahead and glide the iron over all areas of the fabric for a few seconds. I'm using sewn foam, so I like using by any soft and stable. So I'm go just going to go ahead and place some wonder clips around the outer edge. I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew using an eighth of an inch seam allowance using a basting stitch. So basically on my sewing machine, that just means a longer stitch length. So I'm going to be sewing with a four millimeter stitch length all the way around the outer edge and that will secure the fabric to the foam. Can you repeat the same process with the second strip set and the remaining piece of foam interfacing? Okay, now go ahead and grab your lining piece and the respective piece of Pellon Shape Flex interfacing. So the side of the Shape Flex that feels bumpy to your fingertips is the side that will go against the wrong side of the fabric. And I'm just going to go ahead and flip the fabric so that it's face down. I usually recommend using a pressing cloth, although for my videos I usually don't use a pressing cloth just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I have my iron set at the cotton setting. You can use a bit of steam if you wish. And you just wanna keep the iron moving, gliding and over the fabric for a few seconds over each area until the shape flex is properly adhered. 
So when you think you've ironed long enough, you just want to flip the fabric over and try to peel back a corner of the fabric from the interfacing. So if you can easily peel the fabric away, that just means you need to iron it a little bit longer. And if it feels fully secured, you can go ahead and repeat that same process with the other lining piece and piece of shape flex interfacing. Okay, go ahead and pull out your accent piece and with the wrong side of the fabric face up, I'm gonna take my ruler and draw a horizontal line that's a quarter of an inch down from the top edge. So I'm just gonna draw that line straight across. Go ahead and either press or finger press at that line toward the wrong side. And we're gonna be attaching this to the bottom edge of one of the exterior pieces. So the pressed under edge will be against the exterior fabric and you wanna align the sides and the bottom. So I'm just gonna use some wonder clips to hold the layers in place. If you'll notice that cutout area is right there, we'll take care of that in a minute. Okay, so we're going to top stitch using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Turn your stitch length back to your usual, usual stitch length. Mine is two and a half millimeters. Um, actually, I'm going to crank it up for this top stitching to three millimeters. And I'm going to stitch the top edge and the sides just to where the cutouts start. And I'm also going to stitch the bottom edge. Then I'll take it off the sewing machine for just a second, cut out the cutout areas, and then finish the inner squares. Okay, so I'm just going to take that off the sewing machine for one second, flip to the wrong side, and I'm going to go ahead and just trim the overhang of the accent fabric so that I can then secure that piece as well. And you'll repeat this for the second exterior piece and the remaining accent as well. Okay, now go ahead and pull out your zipper. I'm just going to go ahead and fold the zipper in half so that I can mark the center of the zipper. Okay, we're also going to mark the center of both of the exterior and both of the lining pieces. So I'm going to flip to the wrong side and use the paper pattern piece so that I can mark the top edge where the center is and you'll do the same thing for the lining piece. So you'll have all four pieces marked with the center. Okay, so we'll start off by attaching the zipper to the exterior piece. The zipper is going to be face down and you're gonna align that center marking with the center marking on the wrong side of your exterior. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin that in place and just go ahead and curve that zipper along both of the sides of the exterior and if you find it, it's easier to pin with the zipper unzipped, feel free to unzip it. Okay, so we're going to take this over to the sewing machine. You'll need to place the zipper foot on your machine, and we're going to be sewing this pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, make sure you have your stitch length turned to your usual stitch length, and on my machine that's two and a half millimeters.
Okay, so now we're gonna add one of the lining pieces. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and unzip the zipper. Just makes it a little bit easier with all the layers. Obviously you don't want the zipper to be twisted or any extra zipper tape in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip my lining so that it's face down. So it'll be right sides together with the exterior portion and the zipper will be sandwiched in, in between. So first off, I'm gonna start with my center markings, make sure that they're all aligned and then just go ahead and continue pinning both of the sides. So we're gonna be sewing this lining using a quarter of an inch seam allowance again with the zipper foot. And if you feel more comfortable, you can actually sew from the wrong side of the exterior because you will probably be able to see your stitches from the wrong side of the exterior. So if you're more comfortable, you can sew directly on top of the previous stitches. And if you'd rather just go with that quarter of an inch seam allowance instead, that's perfectly fine. So I'll, what I'm doing here is I'm aligning my exterior and lining to make sure that they match up. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this over to the sewing machine. Okay, go ahead and turn the fabric so that they're wrong sides together. And go ahead and give this finished edge a press. I'm actually just gonna finger press since I'm using some waxed canvas for my prints and for the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna lengthen my stitch length to three millimeters and I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. Okay, now we're gonna add the remaining exterior piece. So just to get started with the pinning, I'm just gonna have the zipper zipped. And I'm gonna place the right side of the zipper against the right side of that second exterior piece. And again, we wanna start off with those center markings aligned. Okay, so once I get the center marking aligned, I'm going to unzip the zipper again, just because it's just a little bit easier only having to contend with the zipper bulk on half of the zipper. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and pin the zipper in place. And same as before, with the zipper foot still on the machine, we're going to be sewing the pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, go ahead and turn your stitch length back to your usual and minus two and a half millimeters. Okay, so if you'd like to, you can just go ahead and zip it up just to make sure your zipper is not twisted before we move on. I'm just going to go ahead and push that side out of the way, and we're going to add the remaining lining piece. So I'm going to place the lining again, right side against that second exterior piece. The zipper will be sandwiched in between. And just as we did before, we're going to align that center marking first and then pin the rest of the way. Okay, 
Okay, again, we're going to be sewing this pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance with the zipper foot. And if you feel more comfortable doing so, you can go ahead and flip to the wrong side of the exterior and sew directly on top of your previous stitching. Okay, so go ahead and turn that second pairing wrong sides together. And either press or finger press the finished edge. And just like before, we're gonna be top stitching using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I'm going to increase my stitch length to three millimeters. Okay, go ahead and zip the zipper about halfway. And I'm going to go ahead and place the exterior pieces so that they're right sides together. And I'm gonna push that lining out of the way. Align the bottom edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin that. Okay, and I'm also going to pin the lining right sides together You'll sort of need to crunch the fabrics just so you can have access to the straight edge of the bottom of the lining. So we're gonna be sewing the exterior all the way across using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. The lining we need to leave an opening. So I'm only gonna sew in about an inch and a half from each of the side edges of the lining. So basically just where I've pinned. We need to leave an opening at the bottom edge of the lining for turning everything right side out at the end. So here's my opening that I'm going to leave in the lining. Okay, and again, these are both going to be a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, go ahead and turn back to your usual stitch, le stitch length and mine is two and a half millimeters. Now we're going to sew that lining and again remember to leave the opening. Okay, so now we're going to close up the side. So I'm going to start on the end where the zipper is fully closed. Remember the zipper head is in the middle somewhere because we've unzipped it halfway. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the exterior. First, just because there's a little bit of extra thickness, I'm gonna go ahead and take my finger and slide it in the side edge and make sure that side edge is smoothed out, this area right here. So I'm gonna place a wonder clip just to hold that area flat and same thing on the opposite end. So I'm trying to eliminate sewing over fabric that's bunched up over here. So that's why I want it to be nice and flat. So here's the, the zipper teeth over here. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of pinch this end of the fabric and you want it to, to form a straight edge over here. The seam is going to fall right where the zipper teeth are. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple wonder clips on there for now. So that's the exterior. I'm gonna flip it over to the lining side now and I'm gonna do the same thing. So basically I'm stacking the lining right on top of the exterior. So I'm gonna remove that wonder clip and I'm clipping all the layers together. So as you can see, here's my lining, here's my exterior. We're gonna be sewing over all layers in one go. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a nice straight edge here. I'm gonna be sewing this edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance.
Okay, so this end is a little bit more finicky just because we don't have the benefit of a closed zipper. So super important, you want to make sure you have the right side of the zipper against the exterior fabric. You don't want the zipper to be twisted. So if you need to take a little peek inside just to get everything situated, that's completely fine. So I'm going to use my fingers to bring the zipper teeth so that they're more or less up against each other, touching and not overlapping. So let me go ahead and get those just pinned temporarily in place just so I know that my zipper's not twisted. And I'm going to do the same thing with the exterior. I'm going to go ahead and stick my fingers through the side edges, smooth the fabric out, and then place a wonder clip. And the same thing on the opposite end. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm actually going to flip this around. I'm going to go ahead and bring that zipper so it's right on top of the seam on the exterior. And then pin it in place. Alright, and same thing before, I'm going to stack that lining directly on top. So just take your time here again because the zipper is not closed it makes things a little bit just requires a little bit of extra patience here okay so as before we're going to be sewing this pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance okay now we're going to trim the overhang of the zippers so just trim it even with the fabric. And now it's time to pull everything right side out through the opening in the lining. So your zipper should be at least halfway unzipped. If you need to unzip it more, that's completely fine. You should be able to fit your fingers inside in order to unzip it more. Okay, and go ahead and just turn everything right side out. Okay, so I'm going to stick my hand inside and just gently poke out the corners and you can use a turning tool also if you prefer. You want to have nice looking boxed corners. And then it's time to close the opening in the lining. So to do that, you can either do it by machine or by hand. Either way, you'll need to fold or turn the opening toward the wrong side by a quarter of an inch and I'm just placing wonder clips to hold those layers. So you can either slip stitch the opening closed by hand and I have a free video on my YouTube channel showing how to do this with a slip stitch or you can top stitch the opening closed using your sewing machine. So if you decide to do that you'll just be stitching an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. Okay, so anytime you have a project with boxed corners, it's really important to either press or finger press to get that uh, boxy look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip so that the bottom's facing me. And as you notice, you'll have those two points over here. I'm just going to pinch with my fingers and finger press and create a straight edge. So you can either iron this edge with your iron or I'm going to place a few wonder clips on this edge for an hour or two and that will sort of give the foam new memory in order to hold the boxy shape. Same thing on the opposite end. Again, pinch the, the corners and then smooth it out to create a straight edge. And I'll do the same thing after I've released these for the side edge as well. I'll just put a wonder clip on either end. And again, if instead of the wonder clips, you can use your iron instead. Okay, and your project's all finished. Thanks so much for sewing along with me. I can't wait to see your finished dumpling pouch. Be sure to post a photo of your finished project in my Facebook group. And remember, if I can do it, so can you.